Hello everyone, Pahamar here with part 3 of episode 3 uh, for helpful tools in setting up your development environment. Uh, this video wasn't entirely planned. Uh, after releasing part 2, uh, in speaking with a couple of the modders, I was uh, told of a couple errors in my uh, part 2 video uh, and a couple ways we could do things better, so I wanted to put out this fix video uh, to get everyone back onto the same page prior to episode 4. It'll make things a lot easier for you, and it will allow you to see uh, a little bit more feedback from uh, Eclipse, so let's get started. I've got Eclipse open here, and I'm just going to open up the Let's Mod Development Eclipse workspace we created in Part 2. So Eclipse is going to load up now. So inside here, we are going to want to go to Window, Preferences, Java, Compiler, Errors and Warnings. And what we're going to want to do is hit Restore Defaults and hit Apply. It'll rebuild. The reason we're going to do this is a lot of the things I had a setting to ignore from warning gave us really good feedback on um, various bugs and bad, um, bad Java practices, development practices inside of our code. And it was really to kind of get down this warning count down here. Because uh, right now, when you uh, deobfuscate Minecraft, um, there's some bugs in it related to, uh, like you'll get warnings, not bugs, you'll get warnings on um, bad practices and whatnot. So I had always turned these things from uh, warning to ignore just to get this number down so I can ignore it. I was actually shown um, a better way of doing this. So once we close out that window by hitting OK, we're going to go to our Let's Mod Mod Java project. We're going to right click on the Minecraft source folder and we're going to go to properties. Inside of here, we're going to want to select the Java compiler. And we're going to check ignore optional compile problems. Hit apply and OK. Eclipse is going to rebuild the workspace, as you can see down here in the bottom right. And what this is going to do is all those warnings that we would get because of our bad practices and whatnot. It will ignore the ones uh, that come from Minecraft itself, the deobfuscated and decompiled Minecraft code. So you will only see warnings related to your own stuff, uh, which is important. This will show you things like if you're importing classes you don't need, if you are accessing things improperly, if you are uh, using deprecated methods and whatnot. You'll get these warnings down here in the Problems tab down here. I'll just make it a bit bigger for everyone. So. We ignore the Minecraft ones, we only care about our own, and everything's good. Something else I wanted to show, um, we had a lot of comments in uh, part 2 talking about uh, different Git tools. Uh, yes, you can use the command line. Uh, you can use Smart Git, like I'd uh, commented on in the, in the last video. I've now uh, heard that it works for both Mac and Linux Unix. If you're going to use Smart Git, when you install it, make sure you set yourself up for a non-commercial uh, usage. Uh, you get an option for three. Um, we're not selling Minecraft mods, so a non-commercial license works properly for this, so you can go ahead and use that. And I didn't mention it before, um, but it is valid too. Eclipse Juno, uh, the latest version of Eclipse, now does come with a built-in uh, Git client called eGit. I'm going to show you how you can get to it. I'm not going to show you how to set it up, but I'll show you how to get to it. So right now in Eclipse, this is what's known as the Java development perspective. And a perspective is just uh, what's kind of shown to you in the UI. In the top right here you can see we're in the Java perspective. If you click on the icon to the left of Java, you'll see Open Perspective, and you'll get an option of different ones you can open. You can play around with this, kind of get yourself used to more of Eclipse, but if you want to open up the Git uh, client built into Eclipse, just hit Git Repository Exploring, hit OK. Uh, it's just, you can ignore this window for now. And this is how you would set up uh, your Git connection to your remote repository or your local repository. So if you want to go back to the Java view, once again on the top right, you can see right now we're in the Git repository exploring. You can just click Java and we're back to where we were before. So once again, uh, there is a Git client built into Eclipse if you'd like to use that. Um, there's other ones available out there. Uh, I've now heard that SmartGate works for more uh, platforms. And what else was it I going to say? Oh yes, regarding uh, different uh, development uh, IDEs. Uh, Eclipse is once again we're gonna, what we're going to use throughout the series. You can use whatever you like. Um, you're probably 
move along faster if you use Eclipse, uh, just because that's what we're going to be doing, what the video is going to be showing. Uh, you could use JBuilder, uh, you could use IntelliJ, you could use NetBeans. Uh, it's going to be up to you to set it up uh, to work properly with Minecraft. Um, but really, writing Java code is writing Java code. Um, like I said, you could do it in Notepad, Notepad++, VI, Vim, etc. Uh, whatever works best for you. So, please make sure that you go ahead and you make these changes to your Eclipse environment if you're using Eclipse. It'll get us all onto a level uh, stage uh, when it comes to Episode 4, which is our first mod class. Later on in the series, I may show you a updated way of doing an Eclipse workspace. Um, but for now, this will work perfectly for us, and uh, I'll see you next time.